the Jets and the Bills tonight. We're here to break down all of the props for tonight's Monday night football game. Welcome, everyone. I'm Andy Lang. That is Andrew McGinnis. We are from wagertalk.com. We're going to break down all the props and maybe some parlay pieces. we got some interesting storylines uh, going tonight. Uh, Andrew, number one in hockey right now. Congratulations on that. Uh, we were just talking about that before we come on there, so let's catch some plays uh, in the NFL. And uh, we do have a, a pretty wonky day with some sports uh, going on at some odd times. So if you want to get bets in on hockey, we have 1 o'clock hockey games. We have, Andrew, would you say 2 o'clock CFL game? So uh, it's a it's going to be an absolutely fun day. Uh, before we get started, hit the like button, leave a comment, tell us what your best bet is. If you don't have a hot take or a comment, Let's do the code word of the day is fly, F-L-Y. It's feeling like a word with no vowels in it. Uh, so <laughs> let's let's do that. Uh, Andrew, let's jump right into the game here. Um, Jets and the Bills, I guess what's your take on the – I guess before we actually talk about specific props, do you have any kind of predictions what you're expecting from the Jets? Fire their head coach? Is there going to be a big change in philosophy? How are you kind of going in there with your mindset on the Jets tonight? Well, I'm, I'm wondering, Andy, if Robert Sala is still here, if not for those interceptions uh, last week from Aaron Rodgers. You can't fire Aaron Rodgers, right? So uh, Sala, I mean, I know he kind of had it coming over the last little while, but it's always funny when the coach ends up getting fired. It's usually because of what a, a player did to cost the team the game. Um, you know, I know a bunch of things went wrong, but it wasn't, you know, three interceptions from a guy like that game and game uh, deciding drive. And, and that's how it ends. It's pretty tough for that. how a coach to be fired, but you know, I'm expecting, uh, I'm expecting the jets to play a little more free. I feel like the chemistry has been getting there despite those interceptions I talked about for Rogers. I do think they're going to be throwing the ball quite a bit, but at the same time, uh, it's going to be a decent day for the running backs. I believe both options, I think RB one and RB two there for the jets. As far as this bills team, I'm curious to see, uh, Andy, how loose they let Josh Allen play, how loose this offense plays. This has the potential, in my opinion, to be one of those games where everyone's fired up about it. Monday night football, you know, last night's game was between two kind of weaker teams, at least right now, the Bengals and Giants. And this one could be a little bit of a letdown offensively, uh, I'm thinking. So I know it might not be what people want to hear me say uh, as far as the people that love to bet high scoring gains, but this one might not be a, a highlight-packed game as it's uh, made out to be. What, what do you think about that? I think the Jets are going to get back to what they, what their identity really truly is, and that's not, that's running the ball. I, I I don't believe Brees Hall is this bad. I don't believe their off their offensive line isn't great. I don't believe they're that they're this bad. And what a perfect spot to get right. This is the the worst team in the league. The Bills defense at yards per carry. They. they Give up 5.2 yards per 5.2 yards per carry. It means you hand the ball off twice, you get a first down. Uh, that that's kind of the level of defense that we've seen from from the Buffalo Bills. So let's start with passing props. If these numbers are really really low for passing yards, 216 and a half and 200. Yesterday, Andrew, we saw quite a few games where both quarterbacks were under 200. Um, there were several that I just thought the number was too low. Drake May was one of them. Uh, you know, you get these low numbers and now you're just playing the number at that point. I don't know, 216 and 200. That seems awfully, awfully low for these. What's your take on the quarterbacks and the passing yards? I still kind of like the under 200 on uh, Josh Allen. I think the defense is going to be really strong for this Jets team. I think they're going to cause a lot of problems for him. And just looking at some of these numbers uh, for the New York Jets being right up there, right up there at the top of the league as far as passing yards allowed per game. They're really shutting teams down, and they're shutting a, shutting a lot of quarterbacks down that play like Josh Allen, that like to take those long shots downfield, that kind of don't like to make the easy pass. I, I don't think Josh Allen has ever seen a wide-open guy five yards ahead of him that he loved to hit. He wants to go for the big play, and I feel like the Jets are going to be ready. Um, they're I don't want to say they're a bend-don't-break team, but they don't give up the big ball. You know, and Josh Allen accumulates a lot of he goes over his passing yard numbers, Andy, a lot of time because of one or two big balls per game. Uh, but having said that, I understand this is a very low number uh, and, and it, you know, it would take just one or two big throws to probably get this one over throughout the game. But I'm going to go under with Josh Allen. Uh, another under 40 here. We're going to go under on Aaron Rodgers attempts kind of correlates to what you were just saying there, Andy, about uh I like how you said 
Brees Hall is not this bad. Well, he's not uh, this let's bad. Hope, he hey, can't be this bad. If he's not that bad, hopefully he's running the ball and hopefully Rodgers is not throwing the ball. Um, the good news is, though, is that uh, uh, Rodgers has gone. Uh, uh, sorry, he, he went over this in his last in three straight games, but. I'm expecting them to run the ball a ton in this particular matchup. And if you go back a handful of games for this Jets team, even when they started the season, they were a team that was almost like limiting uh, his throws. And then when he would throw the ball, it would be a big play. And then I'm going to go out on a limb here with this one. And you'll remember, Andy, I never make these. I never make these ones, whether it's guy not to or a guy to do this. I'm going to take Josh Allen to throw his first interception of the season. And shop around for the best price on this one, guys. But I think the pressure of the Jets pass rush, I think the secondary is going to cause problems. I think we're going to see a 50-50 ball thrown up from Josh Allen that uh, that's one of the corners grabs there for the Jets. And let's not forget, with the arm that he has, sometimes his interceptions that he gets are kind of like punts anyway. So I'm going to go on the limb and call my shot here. Josh Allen, first interception of the season tonight. I'm going to have to piggyback and completely agree on the interception. Um, you know, last year in the first game, he threw three interceptions against this Jets team. Uh, he threw one in the next one, four interceptions just against the Jets. And I'm looking at his interceptions uh, right now. He only had three games last last season in the regular season without an interception. So a lot of times we talk about regression back to the mean. This feels like a regression spot where, <laughs> like, come on, how many games is he not going to, you know, throw a, a, an interception, especially when, you know, he's just not been that accurate. I mean, last week against Houston, he only completes nine attempts or nine passes out of 30 attempts, and none of them got intercepted. It just, it, it feels like you're playing with fire um, with that. So I would agree that this one has a has all the makings of a, him to throw an interception. Uh, the, the passing touchdowns. So I've been enjoying playing uh, these quarterbacks and parlaying together to have one and uh, one touchdown throw. Feels like most guys are getting one. I just can't get to the window on these over one and a half touchdowns. And the books have <laughs> figured this one out. Like now the, the line has swung so much. I almost want to sprinkle the over on both these guys because they're both at plus money and one of them hits. I'm, I, are they both only going to throw one touchdown? I, I like, I don't think the bills defense is, is that good? The Jets secondary is that good, but you can run on them. So what if they get in close and they get two there? I don't know. These these huge plus money on over one and a half. I don't know. I think you play them both or nothing. I uh, It's not going to be a client play, but what are your thoughts yeah. when you see numbers like this? Uh, well, first of all, I like what you said there about the plus money, right? And that's what I've been practicing a lot with my clients and the bankroll management lately is it's okay to have chalk sometimes, but it's about picking your spots when you do it. But in situations like this, you know, if the the win clip you need to have, Andy, with with passing touchdown over one and a half props is a hell of a lot different when you're getting plus 140, 50 average versus laying minus 130s and 40s. Um, but here's the thing with Rodgers and, and, and the Jets. I have confidence in him throwing passing, passing touchdowns if... They don't get within the five yard line. You know what I mean? Like get this guy in the goal line. They're running it, you know, get him on the 10 yard line. They might even just run it until they, until, you know, until they get in. Um, same thing probably for Josh Allen. We need these guys to be scoring like 20 yard touchdowns. That's what worries me. Maybe even a little bit more for, um, uh, for, for Josh Allen. Like he'll, He'll run it in himself, but he'll also back up and hit a tight end or, you know, hit somebody on a quick slant. But that's the thing with Rodgers. I feel like, his it's almost like he has a handshake deal with his coaching staff. Like, Hey man, like once you cross that 20 yard line, you're not passing the ball anymore. Have you noticed that? Like, I feel like he he's a passing coach. You know, they they'll give him the reins. They know he can put the ball in, in the end zone. Like a lot of times early in their drive is when they run, but late in the drive, 30, 20 yard line, they're going to let him pass and try and find the end zone. But the second they cross that 15, 20, 10 yard line, he's probably going to have to hand the ball off for three straight plays. So it does worry me a little bit. If there was one guy I would look for a little bit more, it'd be Rodgers. And I don't want to sound like Monday morning quarterback here, but a lot of me saying that is because of what happened last week. It really is. I think Rodgers bounces back from last week's performance. 
Uh, let's take a look at the rushing props before we do that real quick. Andrew, I know you got a promo code up. Uh, we mentioned that you are number one, just a great start uh, to the NHL season. So congratulations to you. Uh, tell us about the promo code and uh, what can we expect this week for you for uh, NHL plays? Yeah, Andy, actually, you have this, this screen up there. People can scroll down to where it says uh, hockey there, and uh, you just click on, uh, yeah, right down on there on the right, hockey. You click on that, the drop-down menu. You go to where it says 30 days, and uh, you type in the code SAVE50. That's SAVE50 will take $50 off a 30-day NHL package. We try and mix things up. Last week, it was the first week of puck time. We gave out a seven-day coupon code seven day nhl plays hey we hope people made some money this week if you missed out you didn't join well you can join me for 30 days of the nhl and like you mentioned we got plays uh, or games going early on we got early action cfl so it's gonna be a great monday look forward to it how about yourself man you're crushing it you're crushing it i don't know how many fighting leagues there are but i know that if if i had to ask somebody i'd ask you uh because you're definitely crushing it in all of them yeah I, there, there are a ton <laughs> that you can bet on i I don't venture out too much because some of those smaller regional leagues are a little wonky. Uh, but yeah, another big, big winning weekend in uh, UFC. We cashed uh, another 5% play in UFC. That's five out of our last six. And we have a huge PFL event, Battle of the Giants, this week. And we have our 5% best bet. Nobody's won more in PFL this year. We've hit over 70% of our bets in PFL. Uh, just We've had one bad uh, the, uh, we had one bad event. That was a vet in Salt Lake City. Every other PFL event has been an absolute cash cow. So uh, UFC and PFL have been a really, really big part of the bankroll. So grab that 5% play. We're going to put all of our PFL and UFC plays in one pack. It's going to be our biggest pack that we've had all year um, for, for MMA. So like, I know it's Monday night football. I would love to come on here and be like, oh, we got this amazing Monday night football play, but that's just not how we operate. Like mm -hmm. we, we want to promote what we've been best at and what we've been winning and what we've been winning at is PFL. So we're stepping out big time um, with this 5% play. We've had this literally th this card has been on our radar for months once they announced like this, this huge PFL card. So super excited about that. That's the only thing we have up, but that's the, the most important thing that we'll be have going this week. So uh, use that promo code for Andrew, go grab that 5% play. Now let's talk about our rushing props here. Um, I'm, I'm a little upset that the book sniffed this one out. Brees Hall's at 59 and a half. Like he opened at like 55 and a half. I was hoping that they would be like, ah, their offensive line still sucks. And let's put it at 30. And I was going to hammer the over man, 59 and a half. I think the books outsmarted me on, on this one. They're, they're, <laughs> not, they're not giving you a discount. I was hoping to get a really low number, but it just didn't happen. So I'll pass on Brees Hall. I expect them to be much better. What's your take on the rushing props though? Uh, well, look, Andy, you know, if I'm going to take the under on passing attempts for Aaron Rodgers, it probably leads me to either have to be on the over on attempts for uh, Allen or um, uh, Brees his, Hall. His yeah, not, back. Let me let me look his up right now. Sometimes these put these. Uh, I saw 13 and a half like literally half an hour ago. So Let's and, go with and that. Yeah, we'll go 13 and a half to the over here. And and, and uh, looking at some of the numbers for him, it's been it's been relatively on and off. Uh, we will say I think he had. Um, two games in a row where he went under this number. And then there were like three games in a row where he went over. But the fact of the matter is, you know, Andy said it best, the jets to get back to their old selves. And I said that, I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to have a redemption game, a bounce back game and make a couple of big special plays. But at the same time, the best way to let Aaron Rodgers do what he does best is to give him the opportunities, but also mix in the run game, establish the run. And if we talked about it there along the goal line, he might get four or five touches alone just within the 10-yard line. And then if they're winning the game tonight, he gets a lot more touches, you know, running the ball out in that second half. So I think 13 and a half is a good number, a respectable number. And if you look at some of the games that Brees Hall has not gone over this number, 13 and a half rushing attempts, it's been when they were losing by like 10 points or 14 points, the more, you know, when, when the game is tied or they're winning, their goal is to get him 15 plus touches. I truly believe that. So I think Brees Hall is a good one to go over. Um, and you know, Andy, I'm a little, little hesitant to mention this one because of, uh, 
you know, the shot that he took last week, I, I know tw- I actually wasn't watching the Bills game, but I saw Twitter blowing up over his uh, Josh Allen's injury there because uh, they people thought it was concussion protocol, but he said he got hit in the chest. Um, but he's gone over 33 and a half rushing um, in seven of his last nine games and three of his last four against the Jets. One thing about quarterback rushing props, I love looking at head-to-heads. I'm not actually a huge head-to-head guy in football just because unlike some other sports, they don't play each other like three or four times a year. You know what I mean? So it's not like it, it, you're, when, you t- when you talk about head-to-head, you could be talking about a guy like five years ago when he did well against a certain, like Joe Flacco. Do you care about head-to-heads with Joe Flacco? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But 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 Josh Allen, I just wanted to say, he, uh, he does run the ball pretty well against this Jets team. And obviously they have a good passing defense. So... Uh, he could be a good idea for for passing yard, or rushing yards. I, I'll just say that I, I that them saying that Josh Allen didn't have a concussion is complete nonsense. Give me a break. We all know what happened. He got concussed, came back out and played. Um, those guys are fades to me. I, I, I feel lawsuit, like they, lawsuit. I, listen, li, uh, listen. Uh, okay, you, listen. They can tell me all they want. I watched it. There's, I, I, I find it really hard to believe that you're going to find a big group of people that was like no we totally believe what the what the bills told us it looked fine like it's like my ankle (laughs) i got hit in the head my ankle hurts there's another reason why you think you had a concussion you got hit in the head and your ankle hurts Uh, (laughs) something's not right um i wouldn't be surprised to see alan uh struggle i just i don't think these these guys that seem to seem to absorb some of these injuries to the head they don't look right for a while we've seen it many many times it's another reason why i like the interception I hmm. like he, he went nine of 30. Andrew, I can't stress that enough in a professional football game. Nine of nine of 30. This wasn't a division three college guy that's struggling. Yeah. This, you know, so he didn't look right. Um, the, the rushing attempts I thought was really, really interesting uh, for Josh Allen. Uh, over six and a half at minus 170. Wow. Uh, that's that's an that's an incredible number because. His rushing attempts the last four games have been four, five, six, and two. So shouldn't that tell us, though, the rushing yards is a good play? If they're telling us minus 170 at over six and a half, if you give me seven rushing attempts for Josh Allen, I'm confident he gets 30-plus yards, right? I, you would think so. I I, I would think so. Um, I, I, they're, I The books are just – I don't know if they're begging you to take the under or if they're – yeah. They're just they're telling you that they fully expect him to run because the receivers or lack of receivers because of all their injuries are are, are nobody's going to be open so he's going to take off and run but I think I'm with you here on the on this rushing yards like you're right that it doesn't really correlate you know he did have a 19 yard run last week he had a 13 yard run against Jacksonville if he runs seven times and he gets one of those 15 20 yard runs you're you're a shoe in to right. cash this over so I, I agree that the numbers don't totally make a lot of sense um, with, with, with Josh Allen's uh, rush ones. I like your Brees Hall over attempts. Um, I think they got to get back, back to, to Brees Hall a little bit more. I know Braylon Allen, you know, has his role. Uh, my only worry is that they're like, you know what, Brees, you're so much better as a receiver than Braylon Allen. So we're going to give Allen a little bit more carries and you're going to be, you know, yeah. what basically a wide receiver. But I, I just, Brees Hall's like I said, he's too good over running back. Um, the rushing yards on Aaron Roger, give me the under three and a half. He's, I, I, I've actually had a decent rate on, on this play. So Rogers like first game, I was like, he's not going to run. He's coming back from Achilles and he didn't run at all, but then he settled in and he started scrambling a little bit. But last week, last week he didn't rush. And that's the, he was, he talked about his ankle bothering him. And I was like, I want to keep an eye on this because if his ankle really is bothering, he's throwing it away. And sure enough, no carries. No yards, uh, no kneel downs. So I would look under Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and uh, I, I have to shout out, Andrew, on our, on our on our prop show, we we took a same game parlay and we got bet tickets sent to us that people actually bet it. We talked about how Kirk Cousins doesn't run, but they're playing the Panthers. So if he kneels down at the end, they count. So we did a parlay of over one and a half rush attempts, but under half a yard for Cousins. And he, No way. And he rushed four times for minus five yards at a six. Wow. Well done. Well done. 
is probably the best same game parlay we've given out. And I was, yeah, people, a couple of people sent us bet tickets showing that they threw That's pretty sick. money on it. Um, but it's a great way to show, yeah, these are correlated. Like the the temps and the, yeah. and the yards are are pretty cool. It'd be funny walking up to a counter at a sports book to, to give that one. In. <laughs> I would. Yeah. I would. Hey, could you uh, could you lock in this guy to go under on yards, but over on temps? Five <laughs> percent, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but that's the thing, Andy. I find that when we do these shows, I love it because it's you and I narrowing in on one game, right? And we're not just talking for forty minutes about eight games. We're talking, you know, for 25, 30 minutes about one. But at the end of the day, I've been preaching low volume. I know you've had a ton of success for a long time with low volume. We're talking about all these. Like for me, I, I always say this to you. And I'm not saying every single time it's going to work out that way. But I said, hey, I like Rogers under on attempts, which means I'm going to like Brees Hall over on attempts. It's not always going to go that way, you know, or else like I could have the script wrong, too. I could have the game script wrong. But at the end of the day, if you a lot of times, I think if you do figure out if the if the quarterback's going to go under or over his passing attempts it can definitely give you an idea how you feel about the rushing attempts uh unless that team just doesn't get the ball much <laughs> and then yeah. it doesn't work out for you at all but yeah, yeah it's it's a big puzzle uh but let's talk about james cook before we go to receiving props but this kind of does uh, work into it um i we haven't talked a whole lot about rushing and receiving yards there's not too many guys that i'm interested in at all on taking over in rushing and receiving but james cook checks that box um, he's their best weapon right now, aside from Josh Allen. I know he's got the injury or injury concern, but I my general rule of thumb is, you know, if he's good enough to play for your for your team, he's good enough, you know, to bet on the 75 and a half rushing and receiving. Uh, I think I can get behind that one. Uh, you know, this is a guy that had 82 yards rushing last week against Houston in a loss, and he also added 17 yards you know, receiving this is a guy that's had 17, nine, 48, 17 and 32 in the receiving game. Um, he only had nine carries for 39 yards against Baltimore. That's probably the best rush defense in the league. Uh, he only had 11 carries for 39 yards against Jacksonville, but that they won by 37. So the game script just like completely out of, you know, completely out of range. I think this could be a really nice James cook uh, game. And I don't know if I can isolate rushing, or receiving. So I think I might play him again. I mean, at 99 total yards last week, this feels like he could be a big weapon with the lack of uh, the lack of wide receivers uh, that Buffalo has. What are your thoughts? Definitely. On James Cook? You like that one? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good. One. I, you know, I th I, I'm, I'm actually, I, I must have like the worst all time record with someone that bets rushing and receiving. <laughs> I'm just better off on picking one of them, but I think he's a guy that's it's worth looking at. It, it's he's definitely a guy worth betting that prop. Let's take a look at the receiving props here. I think there's some pretty good, interesting opportunities. Um, we'll start with the receptions. What are your thoughts on some of these guys with receptions? Well, I'm I'm looking at Garrett Wilson, and I actually saw some books that had six and a half, obviously heavily juiced the under, and. Uh, that one's pretty interesting because he's just flying under that number. But even at the five and a half, getting even money, I'm going to go under with him. Like we like we said a few moments ago, a lot of these things correlate together. If you're right, right about one thing, you're right about the other things. And if I'm going to think that Garrett Wilson's going to get six receptions out of the, you know, how many completions is Rogers going to have early 20s? I don't think he's going to get six to Garrett Wilson. There's going to be a lot of dump offs. I think there's going to be some running backs getting involved uh, in the passing game. And, and honestly, he's been a guy right now where fantasy owners are yelling at the TV screen until he breaks off for a 30, 40 yarder. Really? I mean, it's like, it seems like he's that guy right now where you don't really need him to be someone that, you know, gets a ton. Um, and then I was going to say Dalton Kincaid, but I think that honestly, he's going to be someone I'm just going to bet touchdown score tonight. Uh, I'm going to stay away from receptions and I think he finds the end zone. I think he's more of a red zone target, more of a target when they're, when they're a little bit deeper in the field. So, uh, but that's it for me. And actually, you know what I want to say, Mike Williams has been a guy that's been making some noise. Um, and even though he's kind of been like the guy for the, for the, for the, for Rogers and the jets where, He'll he'll they'll give him a, a kind of almost like a go a go route. I think that his two and a half plus money for us to talk about, you know, utilizing the the good odds and not laying chalk as much as we can to get him over two and a half at plus one oh five. That one kind of intrigues me. 
You know, you were taking kind of the low hanging fruit over and the popular guy like Wilson under getting both of those at even money or better is pretty good. Uh, you know, great transition because I was going to bring up uh, Mike Williams. Here's a sneaky one. I'm going longest reception at 15 and a half. Love it. Yeah. Last four games, 18, 22, 18 and 19 um, targets, four, five and four the last three weeks. So he's getting more involved. He wasn't healthy to start the year. He's getting healthy. And um, I'm liking that the targets are going up. Um, I think I could get behind his uh, his receptions over uh, two and a half, especially at plus money. Yeah. You know, it, 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 if if he gets if he gets four or five targets, yeah, I, I I I I like it. My worry is that they that if the Jets just run 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 against the bad you know against bad teams, so if Rogers his attempts are down, maybe uh, maybe he doesn't get there. But you got to believe all the attention's going on Garrett Wilson, so Williams should be the benefactor. So longest receptions on Mike Williams was one that definitely um, jumped off the page there. Uh, we got to talk Alan Lazard. Uh, they got him juiced at three and a half, you know, four, five, and three the last couple weeks. But he's another guy that uh, 14, 25, and 27 for his longest reception. And you don't think of Alan Lazard as a guy uh, <laughs> who gets long ones, but they got him at 16 and a half. This is cash three out of the uh, out of five games yep. this year. So uh, I don't know if I. I don't normally look at longest receptions, but it feels like there's there's something uh, going well, on. Well, that, that's what I was saying about Rodgers, right? Is that like I think for him, like if 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 I'm on the under for attempts, I think when he throws the ball, it's going to be something special, you know. Yeah. And if not, they're going to be running the ball. Uh, somebody else worth looking at, Andy, for the receptions before we go to receiving yards is Conklin. Um, four yep. straight home games for him. He's gone over three and a half. I know some people might look at those road home splits and and different things for him. Getting that plus 110, again, we talk about it. You know, Mike Williams being plus 105, the under being even money with Garrett Wilson. You know, looking at these, it, it all adds up, guys. If you're playing 10 props a day and all 10 of those are minus 130, your winning clip long-term changes compared to if you're constantly getting plus money here. And Conklin's a guy that, well, let's put it this way, Andy. He's more of a receptions than receiving guy for me, at least, versus a guy like Mike Williams. I would be more confident in the longest reception or receiving yards, but uh, yeah. Conklin worth a look tonight. Um, <laughs> Dalton Kincaid over longest reception, <laughs> 26, 25 and 28. The last three games, they have him at 18 and a half. I don't know if you, if you, if you, if you take a couple units and split it between all three of those guys, two of them hit, uh, you're looking, you're looking pretty happy. So um, let's take a look here at, uh, there was one other guy I was going to look at for the receiving yards. Oh, the, uh, Brees Hall. Um, we talked about him. Um, I, listen, nine, uh, carries for 23 yards last week, but more interesting, only three receptions for 14 yards. And then the week before that two receptions for 14 yards. So, um, if they want to get back to running the ball, like I believe, I think, I think he might get a fewer, fewer receptions. I'm not going to bet on it because I do worry that they may just give Allen a little bit more, a little bit, little more, a little few more carries. And then Brees Hall like becomes kind of their, their big time receiving back. But I thought that number was a little curious because, you know, he sailed over this in the first three games, but the last two weeks against Minnesota and Denver, just like not happening, uh, not happening at all. So, um, and then uh, Keon Coleman, I just, I, I, like fading teams against the jet secondary. Mm -hmm. I they, they like Denver as well. Uh, you got to keep an eye on Patrick Sertan who's hurt now. Um, but this, this jet secondary has just been so good and they're allowing what the, uh, let me pull it up here. The second least amount of yards per attempt, only 5.8. Uh, only the Titans are better. They've only allowed 806 yards total this entire season. And, Right now with this wide receiving core, this is not a difficult like wide receiving core to defend, especially for a unit like the Jets. So I I, I, I want some kind of unders on the wide receivers for uh, for whoever Buffalo's throwing out there. So Keon Coleman, 34 and a half. I don't think he's going to be that difficult to take away um, from Josh Allen there. So. Uh, let's take a look at touchdown props here. Uh, what's real, real quick, Andy? I just want to say yeah. that uh, Alan Lazard is definitely one that I really like for receiving yards. So, uh, 36 uh, and a half. 
Yeah, I like that one for him, and I just think the come trip. It's it. The, the, there's no, you know, people were saying it kind of casually before, like, oh, the chemistry he's had before. Like, it wasn't really a confident prop that many people had. It was kind of like, oh, him and Rogers. No, he is a part of the offense. He is getting looks, and if you look at it, third and long, who is Rogers going to? He doesn't trust some of these other guys still. <laughs> he trusts Alan Lazard, and I think that you know, for him, they have that good relationship. And I also like the fact that, and I know you'll agree with me on this, when he does not catch a ball, he was pissed. He looks at Rodgers, says, my bad. When somebody else doesn't catch a ball, Rodgers always blames them. It's never his fault. And and so Lazard always says, yeah, that's me. I got you. That's, that's my bad. And I did mention a little bit uh, that Rodgers, you know, it's either something special or it's a run. Uh, but I do think that a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky play, and hopefully I'm right and we're texting about this later, Braylon Allen, Braylon Allen over. It was eight and a half at the open. It's 10 and a half now. Oh, wow. He actually has been making a little bit of noise here. I'm going to take the over 10 and a half for Braylon Allen receiving yards. Oh, I like it. I like stepping out uh, on the limb there. That's that I honestly didn't even think of looking at Braylon, Braylon Allen over receiving. <laughs> but honestly, those are the ones that are the those are the ones that are best. Actually, you're 100 percent right about this. 15, 12, 13 and 23. The last yeah. four games, yeah, that's just that's such a sneaky one. I'm so I'm proud of you, Andrew. That's 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 a that's a gem. On the uh, radar, I love these numbers where you can get him with one catch. I I, I just love those ones. And he's Kyle had, use check, baby. Kyle yeah. use check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's had a catch for 15 yards and 12 yards the last two weeks. I can absolutely get on board um, with that one. So. Yeah, the, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember the week that Alan Lazard kind of became a thing in Green Bay? Like there was when Rodgers was there, and every wide receiver was dropping passes or was hurt. It was a disaster, and Rodgers didn't even know Lazard's name. He was just like he went to the sidelines in the middle of the game. He was like, "Can we give like number eight a chance?" Like he just <laughs> called by his number, and Lazard came in and caught a couple passes. And then uh, they interviewed. They were like, "Who is this Alan Lazard guy?" They they interviewed like, "Oh man, like." Were you nervous going out there? And he goes, no, I was made for this shit. <laughs> you love it. You got to love so it. So I was like, okay, it's not a surprise that Rogers loves that guy. Uh, so um, let's do uh, let's do some touchdown scores here. Uh, real quick, Andrew, let's put up your uh, promo code one more time. Tell us about NHL, uh, what you got at wagertalk.com for this week. Look, Andy, I'm trying to do as much content as I possibly can in the NHL because I'm remaining low volume. So I'm giving out free picks, but we're eight and two on the season. The season started realistically. There were some games in Europe, but the real season in North America started last Tuesday. Since then, giving out just 10 picks. We're plus 18 units. You guys can save 50 bucks off a 30 day NHL package. Promo code SAVE50. S A V E 50, the two numbers, 50, five, zero. And, and look, honestly, it's going to be low volume. You're going to get a lot of plays from me throughout the week, but it's going to be one, two, or maybe three at the most each and every day. Um, t- totals, team totals, sides, the occasional prop thrown in there. Uh, and Andy, you'd be proud. We're doing a new prop segment on the show uh, every day. So it's going well. I've seen it. I've seen it. I love it. Um, uh, we'll get to touchdown scores. 5% PFL UFC platinum pack is up our 5% plays in the PFL over 70% winners. And we're just coming off uh, a nice sweep in UFC plays, including a 5% best bet winner. So, uh, five out of our last six, 5% plays in MMA have hit. So very proud of that record. We're up 148 units, all sports this season. So clients are very, very happy. All right. Touchdown score. Hmm. You could make the case there might not be a ton of touchdowns, or you could say that three or four of these guys may score a touchdown. I would have expected a lot of touchdowns in Sunday night football, and I was wrong. <laughs> so that, um, let's pick one here, Andrew. Who do we like to score a touchdown? You mentioned Dalton Kincaid. I mean, plus 280, that's a really nice one. Is that is that the one you're, you're kind of circling? Yeah, I'm going to say if you were to ask me to make three picks, I would say Kincaid. Brees Hall, and then I'm going to say uh, Keon Coleman. That way we got kind of one chalky one, and then we got, I think if one of two, if if Keon or Dalton hit, you make money for the Bills, and then I think Brees Hall's, uh, it's, it's he's got a good shot of getting in, I think. Minus one, <laughs> my, I, you know what, I it's it's not as chalky as I thought it was going to be. It's not like Derrick Henry at minus 250 
yeah. uh, these these days. And yet he's still cashing. So who am I to say that's not a good bet? Uh, let's let's take Brees Hall at minus one twenty. It's the chalkiest guy, but minus one twenty is not that bad. The Bills' worst rush uh, worst rush defense and yards per carry. They get in close. What a great game to what a great way for the new coaching staff to kind of get Brees Hall kind of going. Is you know give him a touchdown. Oh, we still got uh, we still got a lot of love for you, and we got a lot of high hopes for the rest of the season. So we'll do we'll do Brees Hall uh, anytime touchdown score and. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to have any uh, client plays. Can we agree that we just really like Josh Allen to throw an interception tonight, Adrian? It feels like yes. that was. It feels like that was the one we really kind of came to really enjoy. All right, we're, we're going to be waiting on that, and I hope it's in the first half. I hope it's in the first oh, half. <laughs> it's torture, isn't it? When you're yeah. waiting for a guy to throw an interception, there's eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, and the other teams drop two wide open interceptions. You're like, yeah. come on, catch the ball. <laughs> So, yeah, I've been seeing a lot more interceptions lately where it's like one guy tips it and the other guy catches it. It seems yeah. like we're not seeing as many clean ones anymore. It's like you kind of have one guy have to bump it up to the other guy to grab out of the air. Yeah, yeah. Gino had a couple really nice ones. I was so mad that we didn't play Drake May. Uh, Drake May over his yard parlayed with him to throw an interception was just like play of the day. You knew you knew he was going to be airing the ball <laughs> out to both teams. Uh, <laughs> in that game, I have high hopes for Drake May in the props market. I think I think we're I think we're going to do really well betting on him. He was everything I expected uh, and a little more. Um, he looked him, good, so. man. He looked good. Uh, I agree. Uh, his rushing looked pretty good. I hate times. to say it though. I hate the Patriots. <laughs> no, but I, I'm always looking for these guys that I can I can get some consistency with in the props, and I, I think we got a couple pretty good uh, pretty good ways to to do that. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Good luck on your Monday night football plays. Uh, go grab Andrew's hockey pack. Use that promo code save fifty. Go grab the five percent play for myself up at wagertalk.com as a five percent uh, PFL, and you're going to get all of our PFL and UFC. Place. Good luck under your plays, and we will see everyone next time on Props and Parlays today.